Hey, this is John Selway at 343 Labs. Today I'm taking a look at a really fast way to get ideas out using uh, the Max for Live mono sequencer. In this particular case, it's working really well to get like uh, some very repetitive, heavy techno groups going. The idea of a little bit of randomness to generate patterns for techno is uh, something that I've visited before. This time I'm going to use the Max for Live mono sequencer to sort of quickly and playfully create uh, grooves and loops and rhythmic ideas and it's experimenting. We're playing around with sounds. I'm not trying to worry about too many rules about how perfect everything sounds just to come up with some raw material to arrange. And really, like, rather than go to a sample library and grab a loop that someone else made, I'm going to make my own. I'm, uh, you don't have to work with audio. You can keep it in MIDI and tweak all the parameters you will like. But um, in this case, I think the, the most straightforward way to capture and use these ideas that are generated is by turning them into audio and then going back and finding the parts that sound good and then editing from there. And that makes sense also for a lot of the techno production workflow, not always, but often is based in heavily with samples. Not necessarily loops, but you know, your drums may be samples, you might be finding different sounds. And I did give myself some, you know, a, a rhythm to work with. And you know, keeping in line with kind of heavier techno grooves, I've got this you know, kick drum with reverb and distortion and all sorts of stuff. It's pretty typical. You'll see all sorts of tutorials out there about how to make a techno kick drum and get that rumble going on. And uh, that's what I've got. Reverb. I'm using the uh, utility to uh, put the low frequencies in mono so we don't have, you know, problems with stereo too much bass in the low frequencies. If you're lucky enough to cut vinyl of, it, of your track, you can't have any stereo low frequencies. It won't work. So, Also, it translates better on any sound system. And then I'm just totally overdoing it with the saturation and the compression. And, you know, that's how you get that sound, is pushing it a little too hard and, and being a little too aggressive with your, uh, your compression and your saturation. Uh, so that definitely sets the tone. Whatever I create, with these loops, it's going to have this heavy, you know, power kick underneath it. If I was going in a deeper, housier direction or a more minimal kind of, or whatever kind of direction, I would choose a different kick to play with. And then a little hi-hat. Right. 909 sample, a little bit of reverb for space. It, you know, just as an example, now I've got this kind of slightly industrial kind of groove going on um, with this noise loop. Let's look at how I did that. Um, uh, I'll just start fresh, and this may go north, this may go south. We'll see. It, again, it's experimenting, and we don't know exactly what's going to happen until we do it. Right, so let's take a look for this mono sequencer, which we'll find in the Max Instrument. Uh, it's it's in the Max for Live Essentials pack you need to download from Ableton. MIDI effects. There it is. Here's our mono sequencer. 16 steps that I can use to uh, play a pitch, to modulate velocity, to transpose. Uh, there's also a octave transpose to modify the pitch. Uh, there's note duration and then also repeat, which is it will play multiple uh, per step. So you can do glitchy or faster rhythms per step. Uh, I'm not going to get too complicated with this. I'm really more concerned with what notes are playing and when. So we're going to be looking at the pitch primarily and this random button. I'm not writing anything. I'm not picking a step. I'm just going to hit random and see what happens. And I. I I use this a couple of ways, you know, with this noise, there's a simpler, I put a noise loop, this noise loop from the library in here and set it to slice. I didn't even choose what the slices are, I didn't know. I just threw it in there and 
randomly uh, and playing it and generating different patterns. So let's try that again. And also, uh, I found it really interesting and kind of fun to play with uh, drum kits. It makes sense because I'm I'm randomly finding notes to play with the mono sequencer, and you know, with a with a drum rack or uh, any drum kit, each note's playing a different sound. So it's you can come up with patterns, drum patterns or otherwise, depending on what samples or sounds are in that drum rack, uh, really quickly. So let's find a drum kit. I mean, it really could be any of these. Let's start with this one. And right off the bat, when I hit play, what happens? Nothing happens. You can see over here that the mono sequencer is playing a note that doesn't have a sample on it. Um, I can fix that. I can transpose the notes here, uh, but very quickly, any any MIDI note you play from a clip will transpose the mono sequencer. So let's see what note gets me down into the right octave. Okay, <laughs> let's turn that down a little bit. Uh, so, you know, now I'm giving it a note. Let's see what note that is. All right, so now I've got a, a note in the octave that that drum kit is in, and I'm just going to hit the random button that's going to randomize the steps. It's just doing a little bit here because the percentage is low. I want to increase the percentage. Let's just make it 100 because we want it all over the place. And now there's a pattern. Um, all right, that sounds like a bad drum machine. Um, but let's tighten it up a little bit. I'm gonna just, I'm making, I wanna maybe do like a rolling techno thing. And a lot of time rhythmic patterns in harder uh, techno are, they're not necessarily full bars. There might be two beats uh, or, you know, half a bar. So, all right, that sounds like a drum fill. That's more like it. All right. Maybe you can hear where I'm going with this. I'm, you can hear how fast different rhythms are created and different combinations of sounds are playing because I'm randomizing those notes. Um, and basically, it's hit or miss depending on what sounds are in the kit, depending on what notes you hit uh, when you randomize the pitch of the mono sequencer, but it's fun to play with and you can try different kits. Uh, we can add effects to it. Um, some of the kits uh, have sound more than just drum sounds in them and that's kind of where things start getting a little bit more interesting. So I'm just gonna let this play for a couple minutes. I'm gonna fool around and see what I can discover. Although before I do, I'm going to record that one because that's a good drum loop for a really heavy techno track. So let's uh, make an audio track, route the audio from the track that kid is on. The monitor's off. I don't want to duplicate the signal. I'm already hearing it. Arm the track for recording and... There it is, so let's try that again. And this time I'm just gonna play around a little bit, try some different kits, try some different combinations with the mono sequencer and see what I come up with. There's an example of uh, what, how it gets interesting when it's not just drums in the drum rack. You've got a little chord stab in there. There's kind of a low droney effect slash pad slash I don't know what kind of sound in there. And this would be a great one to uh, throw some effects on. Um, you know, any kind of delay is definitely a good possibility. But I'm going to dirty it up a little bit. We'll distort it. Let's try... Eh. Where's that new one? Pedal. This is pretty aggressive. Mm -hmm. 
Gives it some edge, doesn't it? Um, let's see what happens if I make this uh, length of this uh, pattern a little bit longer. I'm going to bring the number of steps over to eight. I like that. Let's see what that sounds like. That's a pretty heavy groove right there. And how long did it take me to find that? It was just a drum kit, I pressed a couple of buttons, I threw some effects on it. Um, so again, really quick and easy way to get started making grooves like this. Um, let's see, let's capture that one to audio. Although I'm gonna capture it without the effect so I can process it again later. Try some other drum kits. There's some vocal in there. I don't hate it. I don't know what he's saying. Yeah, some of these kits have. Um, effects built into them, we can play around with those as well to get a different tone to it or a different uh, atmosphere. That one sample has a lot of reverb in it. Let's see which one it is. Ah. filter on that because I was already while I was listening to that thinking about how I would use that in a track and just simply sweeping a low pass filter across this and building it up over several bars uh, is already going to do a lot to, uh, for the beginning of an arrangement of this. Um, of course, I could keep doing this all day, uh, but I want you to do it all day. <laughs> Just break out a mono sequencer, throw some random drum kits. If you want to take that a step further, build up your own, you know, kit of sounds that you like to work with. Um, and you heard, again, how combined, having drum kits that aren't just drums, having samples, whether they are synths or effects or voices or whatever. Uh, also remember in you know, the drum rack can hold anything. You could put any synth in there you want, any kind of sound you want, and then use the mono sequencer to randomly generate patterns. Um, and use that to get 
your own loop library built up. Or if you're the kind who likes to get in deep and program and automate and play around with the individual layers of sounds, um, you can stick in on that side of things and really sort of micromanage those sounds. And, uh, either way, it's a really quick way to bang track ideas out or build up loops for your library. You can take courses with John Selway here at 343 Labs. 343 Labs is an electronic music school and community in downtown Manhattan. We offer courses for all levels of learning electronic music production, with course topics including Ableton Live, Logic, Synthesis for Music Producers, Songwriting and Music Theory, and more. To learn more about 343 Labs, head to 343labs.com. Make sure you subscribe to this channel for more tutorials with our instructors, master classes, and content from our electronic music community. Hey, this is John Selway. I'm an instructor for 343 Labs. Uh, and today I am struggling to figure out what I'm going to say. <laughs>